Happy Orgasmic Mother's Day. Yeah. That's my new essay. I love that essay, and I love the picture of you with your siblings. You are the t- four of the cutest kids in the world. Yes, yes. Bess and Frank Dodson had some good-looking kids. That's good for Good genes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, good totally old. Totally cute. Betty looks like Shirley Temple. <laughs> I did. I, when so we, li- we, lived, we lived in uh, Santa Monica when I was five. Oh, nice. And Mother made those little sausage curls that Shirley wore, and people would come up and say, Oh, Mrs. Temple, could I have your autograph? <laughs> and she would never say she wasn't. She would sign Mrs. Temple. <laughs> oh, and they'd look it. at me and they'd say, How are you, Shirley? And I'd smile. I'm fine. <laughs> so for Mother's Day, I thought we should honor our feminist foremothers as well as our mothers. I want to honor my mother first. Okay, go ahead. Bessie, thank you for being salt of the earth. She didn't get much schooling, which didn't screw up her mind, and she didn't get any religion which didn't bend her mind Helps. and yes and her own mother died when she was four years old wow so she raised wow. herself with her three older aunts and it was all women and it's it, her life story is an amazing one and I and I and I want to write it at some point but I'm always saying this and everyone knows I say it all the time the best thing that can happen to any kid is to have a mother who believes that masturbation is a mm-hmm. natural activity for children and I never was punished. I remember asking my dad what masturbation was because I heard the word and I was such a geek, like I, I like, had to know. And he said, his answer was, it's when you have more fun at home than going out on a date. <laughs> Charlie, you're hip, baby. <laughs> I'm going to thank my parents because they raised me to be sincere, care about my fellow man, and it was never about what we looked like or what we owned, ever. It was who we were. That's good. That's a good lesson. If they weren't religious, they'd be perfect. Who's your favorite first wave feminist? As we're talking about our feminist foremothers. Yes, yes. Victoria Woodhull. Why? Because she was the outrageous, outrageous, outspoken about sex. She loved it. (laughs) She had a lot of it. And she said, I will have, if I choose to have sex with a hundred men, I will do so. And nobody will. And I mean, you know, it's like. When I used to talk back in, the, even in the 70s, mm-hmm. about having multiple sex partners, people that was would go, huge. Oh, what? what? It's are still you? a big deal now. It still is a big deal. And my favorite first wave feminist is my great, great aunt, Dr. Court. She was one of the first women to graduate medical school, had a practice in New York, and when she signed on to a hospital for her residency in 1898, 19 male doctors resigned on the spot and walked oh. out of the hospital. You know what? That's a compliment. <laughs> That's a fucking compliment. You did it right. <laughs> You're that polarizing. Damn. Nobody ever walked out because I entered a room or a profession. I have to throw in my two maiden aunts because what a bad deal they had. Oh, if you didn't, yeah, you didn't get married, you were like the family bitch. <laughs> so my, 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 uh, my Aunt May, who was older than Aunt mm-hmm. Grace, they lived together. And she was the one who worked, and I remember towards the end, my brother owned a clothing store, and she was the seamstress. And I just remember Aunt May sitting behind a sewing machine day and night, you know, altering clothes. Oh, God. And sewing is such bad work. I'm telling you. And she supported herself and her, and her sister. It's, and they lived in a crummy little place in a little apartment. I mean, they didn't go hungry, and they had a roof over their head. But they but, made their way. That's they, the whole point. The women, they did. They we did. make the way, and we're the mothers, and we yeah. have complete control and the power to influence. We always talk about this. Oh, what a mother can do for their child in terms of sex. The kid it, is in the living room, and she or he starts playing with their wee wees, and it <laughs> or feels, if it's a little girl, she goes like this with her legs, and, and she's rocking on the chair, and you know, and <laughs> it just uh, the, the the only thing they have, the only message they have to get is that. You know, in case of grandmother or the neighbors you or somebody, be private. Who's, just say, "Honey, do that in your room. It's something we do. It's private. It's special. Private. It's special and it's private. And then it's not a big. It's not a big deal. But it's the punishment. It's how many times oh, have yeah. I had a client come to see me, and I always ask about your first memory of masturbation. What was the first? And message? that's the first memory they have that it's bad and Whack! it's. Great. What about playing doctor? That was so much fun. Oh. I loved playing doctor with Peter White. My mom babysit him, and he would, we'd lock ourselves in the downstairs bathroom, and we'd lay on the cold tile. And uh, 
I ended up having like a little toolbox in my Holly Hobby lunchbox. I had little things that I would probe him with. We didn't have toys. We were too poor. <laughs> it is the beginning of socializing our sexuality. Yeah. And so our culture wants it to be private because if it's private, you don't you learn don't anything mm -hmm. and you're going to end up being a victim. You, any Anything you're told, you're more likely to believe. So it's a method of control over... A huge population. And it's fear mongering. Everyone is, it's hard, I guess, to accept your child as sexual, but we're all sexual beings. We have to have respect for each other. And we as have a to mother. Have re respect for sex. Yeah, and I know one of the things that women would take a workshop and then they'd dash home and they'd, the teenage daughter or whatever. <laughs> oh, honey, you've got to start masturbating. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, don't no. push it too hard either. No, no you can't. Don't be buying them vibrators and stuff. That's no. not good. And don't be giving them books. Put the books on the bookshelf. In their environment and they can come to it. Let them find it on their own. They are going to be exploring. They'll find it. Yes, they will find it.